Why would anyone as an adult listen to another adult tell them what to do and how to live their life? I'm not talking about a job. I'm not talking about following the law. I'm talking about people in relationships, talking about family, talking about romantic partners. I'm talking about friends, anyone that is old enough to live their life and make decisions, make money, contribute to the world and do what they want to do. (laughs) Why do people do what others tell them to do? Or if they don't do what others tell them to do, why do they um, fall under the spell that some people have? And let me give you an example. Somebody wrote to me and said, uh, my family doesn't like my wife. They don't like her. We've been married for years and um, I don't know what to do. He said that nobody in my family likes my wife and they all insist that she took me away from them. I told them multiple times that it's not that way at all, but they don't want to understand. First thing that comes to my mind is something my mom told my girlfriend and I when I was uh, with somebody else way back when. And she said, why don't you have kids? Why aren't you having kids? It's so selfish that you don't have kids. I was (laughs) surprised and shocked, actually, because why does she care? That's what, that was my thought. Why does she care? And why is it selfish? That was my second thought. And I know people are thinking, because you're denying her to be a grandmother and all that, even though I have several other siblings with several other kids. <laughs> but I just thought it was kind of rude to say that. Why don't you have kids? It's selfish. And uh, I'm going to make that long story short. And uh, many years later... She said, you know what? I'm so glad you didn't have kids <laughs> because there's so many now. There's so many kids in our in our family and I love them all, but I don't need any more. I don't need any grandchildren. And I think she realized that it was unnecessary to say that. It was a decision that her and I would make or not. And it wasn't up to her, you know, my mom. And so uh, that was it. And I just didn't know how to answer it back then. I was in my 20s, and I didn't know how to answer. I didn't know what to say. Why don't you have kids? It's so selfish that you don't have kids. Now I know what I'd say. Well, we've chosen not to, and that's our decision. Please honor it. That's it. That's all I'd say. Please honor our decision. This is what we've chosen. And if she said, "Um, well, you're so selfish, I would ask her, how is that being selfish? (laughs) And uh, we would have a conversation about it. But... The point is, I would be confident. I would own my answer. This is the decision we've made, and we're going to stick to it, and please honor that. I honor you where you are. Please honor me where I am. Can you do that? I think that's a great question to ask. (laughs) That's a great question to ask anyone that um, tries to make you change your mind or take a different path when you already like the path you're on. This is the decision I've made. Will you honor it? If they say no, that's fine. Now we know where they stand. But it's still the decision I've made, so you'll have to accept it. If they refuse to accept it, that's fine. That's their choice. But they have no choice. (laughs) They have no choice but to accept it or continue complaining about it which it sounds like where this person is who wrote. But I remember her asking that and me not knowing what to say. And it was just an odd question. And um, now I know what to say. And I think that's a, a very good way to answer a question that somebody is trying to push you in a different direction and uh, is this is my decision. This is the decision I've made. Will you honor it? Will you honor my decision, or even better, will you honor my choice? It's not just a decision. It's my choice. It's more personal. This is something personal that I've chosen for myself. Can you 
get on board with the choices that I make for myself. This is the path that I'm on. This is the choice that I'm making. Can you honor it? I think that's a good question because it forces them back onto themselves to ask themselves the question or reflect upon the question if they can actually, it really comes down to acceptance, if they can really actually accept your choice, your ability to make decisions, your taking responsibility for your life, going in the direction that you want to go, will you honor it? Because what are they going to do? They're going to have to show themselves. They're going to show their cards. Their cards might be, I can't honor that. I won't do it. Which my reply might be, you don't want to see me happy? <laughs> That's a, a low blow, I know. But doesn't it come down to that? Isn't my happiness important to you? Well, it's not that. It's just this. Like this person who wrote me that message. Your wife took you away from us. What a childish, immature view and approach to family love and connection. That doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, I know what's happening. There's some dysfunction going on here. Maybe some high dependency on keeping family together and not introducing people outside into the family to pull others away. But there's that... Um, there's that, I don't know if it's codependence or clinginess or whatever it is, but there's a almost a possessiveness in a family like that. And the possessiveness part is, I don't want you to do what you want to do. I want you to do what I want you to do. Wow, uh, I can't live my own life. I have to live by your rules. I have to live the way you want me to. So if I see something that makes me happy... You don't want me to have that because it doesn't make you happy or something like that. I'm not saying that this person should say these things. I'm just, I'm trying to paint a picture of what it's like to own who you are and be confident and comfortable in your own skin. And when you make a decision, whether it's right or wrong, according to anyone else, it's still your decision. It's your choice. And you look at something or someone and say, that's what I want in my life. That's who I want in my life. That's your choice. Assuming they agree, the person that you want. <laughs> but it's your choice to connect with somebody, care about somebody, love someone, bring them into your life. What if you want to drive that car? It's your choice. Assuming it's your car. <laughs> but let's just say you bought a car and you love it. And other people go, that's a really crappy car. The transmission is going to go in 50,000 miles. Thanks for telling me. I was really enjoying it until you said that. <laughs> How about you just let me drive it and I enjoy my, my time with it. And if it breaks down in 50,000 miles, then I'll deal with it then. Don't make me anxious about my future. Just support my path. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't warn a friend or a family member that something might go wrong. There could be issues that need to be addressed and talked about. But let's look at this message. Family says, she took you away from us. That is manipulative. That is trying to control someone's path to happiness. That is trying to control what they do in their life and who they see and what they want in their life. And this really brings me to the, the main or one of the main points of my answer here, which is we define how people treat us. We define our boundaries so that they know what crossing the line looks like. When you grow up in a family and you leave the nest and you go out on your own and you rent or buy a place to live and maybe you have a roommate and maybe you pay bills and all kinds of stuff that adults do. We leave our family and then we go do our own thing and then sometimes we create a family of our own. When you leave, you are on your own and you are making your own decisions and so what ends up happening sometimes is that family 
doesn't know the new person making those decisions. They only know the old you. They only know the you they remember and maybe the you that they could easily sway and easily influence and easily control and easily manipulate. They know the old you and family hangs on. Some family hangs on to the old you forever. <laughs> Some people will do that with other family members. That is the person I've always known and that's the person they'll always be to me. It's like a, a parent seeing their child is always my child. That's the problem. <laughs> that's the, at least one of the main problems in at least this uh, message that I received is that um, sometimes they don't let go of that. Family may not let go of that, but the reason is, or at least sometimes the reason is, is that sometimes we haven't defined who we are to them after we leave. Sometimes we haven't defined our boundaries. What makes us this new person? How comfortable we feel being this new person. I mean, when we're in that family dynamic, we may, we may still be that same person in many ways, but once you go out on your own, and you take responsibility for your own life, you do change. You do change because you have to make decisions that you didn't make before. And making decisions changes you. Making choices changes you. You have to define yourself to family, to people that may not know another version of you. So that they can't, at least the people that we're talking about today, they can't manipulate you. They can't influence you they can't control you anymore or you just have to convey that um, that's not an option you don't have to say stop controlling me but you can say i'm happy with the decisions i've made will you support my happiness will you honor the decisions that i've made that make me happy or do you not want to see me happy and uh dysfunctional family <laughs> will say, you could be happier. You should listen to us because you think that makes you happy, but it doesn't. Look at all, like this person, look at all the stuff she's done that holds you back. We never get to see you anymore because you're with her. Damn right I'm with her. She's my wife. <laughs> and I love her. If you don't love her, that's your choice. But this is the decision I've made. And this is the decision I'm going to stick with for the rest of my life with her. Hopefully, if all goes well, we'll be together for the rest of our lives. And guess what? You might have to see her on occasion. You might have to see her if we have kids. You might have to see her often. So are you going to get over this? Or are we going to have a challenge in this area? This isn't my advice. I'm just saying this is kind of the mindset that uh, at least I would adopt. Hey, if they don't get over this challenge, that's not on me. That's them. I'm sorry you don't like my wife. That's too bad because she's amazing. So uh, maybe you can see this as something that makes me happy and honor that. Honor the decision that I made to bring this person that makes me happy into my life. And... uh I just want to say, get over yourself. <laughs> that's not very, um, that's not very non-volatile. Let's put it that way. Uh, but I would say this is the decision I've made. I'm very happy with it. Do you want me to be happy? That might be a question. Do you want me to be happy? Of course I do. I just don't think she's the one. Well, I know she is the one. And this is the decision I've made. This is, this is called owning it. I own it. What happens is we're in family for so long sometimes they see us as the old the old person, the old person they knew they could control or influence or manipulate. And uh, we have to redefine who we are. And sometimes that is not just about a single decision. Sometimes that uh, spreads across the spectrum of your life. Let's just say that um, this person uh, had um, questions about buying a house. And so he went to his family and he asked, hey, do you know what I should be doing? Should I 
put the 3% down or the 10% down or should I save money? So he asks all these questions which are very legitimate questions. But now family, maybe in this case, thinks he can't really do anything without us. So we still see him as this uh, old version of him. They're not going to think that way, but you know what I mean. We still see him as needing help. We still see him as needing guidance. That could be something they think every time you say, ask for help. What if you are um, unsure of yourself and they see that lack of surety and they think that, oh, that's another sign that he's still our little boy or my little brother or whatever. That's another thing. It's like people will see what they remember seeing in you and they will find signs of it. The cognitive bias will kick in and they will say, oh, he's still that way. Clearly, because look what happened. So I think it's time to uh, dispel or debunk what they think of you because what's happening is they are applying who you were to who you are today and it doesn't work. And this is something that you have to reflect on because what may be occurring is that you're showing up in other ways that make them think that you are not a good decision maker or you are not capable of finding happiness or finding a healthy person in your life or whatever it is, buying a car, buying a house, getting insurance, all the adult stuff. So we have to redefine that and say, nope, I got it. Something like that. Nope, I got it. I'm taking care of it. Now that's kind of difficult if one of your family members is an expert in something and you want to ask them as an expert, but hopefully not your entire family treats you like you're still this person that can't make his own decisions and find somebody that makes him happy and bring them into his life. And hopefully they are supportive, but it sounds like not everyone is. And so it's time to show up as fully capable, even if you don't feel it. It's time to show up letting them know that you are fully capable of making decisions and you are fully capable of finding happiness. And yeah, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to screw up and you'll deal with it when that happens. But you don't need anybody else dictating your life. It's time to say, I'm fine. I'm happy. Well, she took you away from us. If that's how you feel, that's fine. But I'm still happy. Do you support my happiness? That's my definition of love, supporting someone else's happiness. I don't want to ask you to ask them, do you love me? Because that choice is obvious because it's not that they are loving you in a healthy way, but they think they love you uh, so much that they want you to be happy that they're saying these things. And it's uh, dysfunctional. Again, it's, it's a, a bad approach to love. And so the healthy approach to love is to look at someone and see that they've made a decision that seems to make them happy and uh, you are happy for them. Wow, I'm so happy that you're happy. I am just so grateful that you are in a good space today. That makes me feel good that you feel good. So you have to be careful how you show up to them in other areas of your life. You have to be careful about complaining about your wife to your family or even expressing some difficulties that you're having in your relationship because every little thing that you express that reminds them of the old you and reminds them that they can influence you and they can control you might get you sucked back into that dynamic and you don't want that. So this is all about owning who you are, owning your decisions, telling people to honor you where you are or not. But it would be nice to know that the people who love you want to see you happy. And if you make a decision that makes you happy, why wouldn't it make them happy? This isn't about making them happy. It's about you making yourself happy. And if your family can love that you are happy or not. You can ask a family member, I honor where you are. Will you honor where I am? I honor the choices that you've made in your life. Will you honor mine? If they say no, or if they can't take it, they can't 
uh, possibly allow that or accept it, then you know where they stand. And if you know where someone stands, then you have to accept where they are. They will never like my wife. Okay, I accept where they are. Then you make a choice. Do you want to talk to people and connect with people that don't like the person that you're going to spend the rest of your life with? Maybe you have to say something like, if you don't like my wife and she's the person that I've chosen to be with for the rest of my life, then what you're saying is that you don't want to see me without her. And since I want to be with her, maybe we won't get to see each other. Is that what you're saying? Are you saying that you don't want to see me because you don't like the choices I've made? And of course, they're going to say, of course, we want to see you. We just don't want to see her. Well, uh, you get me, you get the whole package. My wife and I are a package. And I'm sorry that you don't like that, but um, this is how it is. So either everyone's going to get along or they're not. But I don't want to hear you talking down about her. I don't want to hear you talking bad. I don't want you to insult her because this is the person I've chosen. And if you insult her, you insult me. Now that's really standing up and owning it, isn't it? That's really taking charge of your life and your decisions and being proud and confident in the decisions that you've made. And when they know that you are confident, that's how you define yourself to someone else. That's how you define who you are, the decisions that you've made and the confidence in yourself and being comfortable in your own skin and being, damn it, okay with it. Be okay with yourself and all of this will land wherever it needs to land. And it could be messy. <laughs> but who are you going to see every day and spend the night with every single night? Who is going to be in your life 24-7? It's not them, it's your wife. That's your commitment. And yes, we have familiar commitments as well. We have family in our lives. And when they are in our lives, we want to connect with them as well. But if they are not honoring your decisions and the choices you make for yourself, then they have to know that you are the culmination, the summation of all your decisions. And sometimes there are ones that you make that they may not like, but you can still honor them if they are willing to honor you and respect you. And when I honor someone that doesn't disagree with me, I just honor them with love. Meaning, I love you and I honor you, but this is my decision. It is showing them that I still care about them, even if we disagree, and I still honor them, I still respect them, but this is how it goes. This is my decision. This is what you'll have to accept about me. And if you don't like it, I honestly don't want to hear it. <laughs> it really comes down to it. And if you really don't like it, then I guess we can't connect anymore. And that really saddens me because I honor you. Why can't you honor me? And it might come down to saying, I made a conscious choice to be with this person. If you can't support my choice, then that's your choice. But if you bring it up again, we're going to have a problem or I'll leave or I won't uh, come back. I won't come back anymore because again, it's the full package. And again, this works for anything in your life, any decision that you've made, a job that you took, a person that you hang around with that nobody likes. It's still your decision. I'm assuming that most people that listen to this show are adults. But even when you're not an adult yet, you're growing into that space. You're growing into a space of taking responsibility for your life. And I look at it when you start making your own decisions, start paying your own bills and start driving your own vehicle and getting your own job. You are changing and the people that you are not necessarily leaving behind, but moving away from, but still connected to like family, they're going to have to accept the new you. One of the biggest problems is when we finally leave our family and go out on our own is that many don't realize that we are going to change. We're going to go through our changes. And if, if someone is so stuck on the idea of us staying the same, then that is not growth. 
that is not healthy love. I'm not saying that it's unhealthy love to want someone to not change. I'm just saying if you can't adapt and accept somebody for who they are becoming, then what you're doing is making your happiness a priority over theirs. And uh, I know we all have well-meaning intent. We all want other people to be happy, but sometimes what makes us happy doesn't make somebody else happy. And what makes them happy might not make us happy. I definitely know people like that. <laughs> someone and uh, someone close to my fiance and I uh, makes decisions that make us not so happy, but we still love that person. We still very much love that person and want that person to be safe. But they are making decisions that we definitely disagree with. We just hope everything works out. But no matter what, we'll be there. We are there for that person. We are there for them. And so we are just so grateful. I mean, this is another way to look at it. We're so grateful to have that person in our lives at all. I remember watching um, an episode of Judge Judy. She uh, had two people, two parents in front of her, defendant and the plaintiff. And the boys got into an accident or some sort of serious trouble. And it was some petty lawsuit. And Judge Judy just said, I can't believe that you're doing this petty lawsuit. It's just so trivial when you have two living, breathing children in front of you that are safe. And this other person that they were talking about, another third party, her boy died. And you guys are fighting over this? It just blows my mind. And I'm paraphrasing, of course. But it was an enlightening part of the show that she said that because it really puts into perspective what should be your priority. Living, breathing children, they are here, they are alive, and this other child isn't. And here you are fighting over this stupid thing for a few hundred bucks. She made a good point. And that's how I see a lot of life, well, at least with some people. They, they go after the trivialities. They go after the small things that really don't matter when that person is in your life. And they may not be in your life. So why not just enjoy what you have instead of trying to control what they have and what they do? Just enjoy their presence in your life. I want to thank that person for writing that message. And uh, thank you for joining me for another episode of The Overwhelmed Brain. I want to thank our patrons who financially support the show. And if you find value in this show, you can support it as well. Visit moretob.com and there are ways to do that over there. And for a show on how to navigate the difficult relationship, listen to my other podcast called Love and Abuse over at loveandabuse.com. And if you know you're the difficult one in the relationship, join the program that is helping a lot of people heal over at healedbeing.com. And just my reminder to you, always do your best to keep your mind open because that's how you make decisions that are right for you. And just like I was saying earlier, be firm in those decisions so that you let the world know who you are. Always work on your personal growth and emotional evolution. You have more inside you than you could ever imagine. And above all, and this is something I absolutely know to be true about you, you are amazing. Thank you.